Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. This is a regularly scheduled uh, Monday evening Board of Selectmen meeting. It's uh, January 14, 2019. I'd like to call to order at uh, 6.33, almost on time. Um, we're waiting. F we have the Finance Committee here this evening. There there's a couple other members that are showing up, so what we're going to do, Chief, if it's okay, um, we're going to do a couple of our... Uh, other things um, first first thing is the minutes of uh, January 7th Motion made. Mr. Abenham. And second. We have a motion made and seconded to uh, approve the minutes as presented from January 7, 2019. <laughs> all those in favor, mm -hmm. please signify by saying aye. Aye. Okay, Sherry, we're all set 3 0 with January 7, 2019. Um, new business the uh, FERCOG District Local Technical Assistant Program Request. Have you had a chance to review? Okay. Sherry, when is this going to be in for? Um, January 25th, so we could go um, we're going to be meeting on the 22nd, so if the board would like a little more time. I okay. had a couple of ideas, too. I wanted to run by you, but I haven't. Okay. You, all right, so you want to uh, present your ideas tonight, or you just want to? Yeah, if, if you'd like a couple. Um, Go ahead. There's been some interest in establishing a municipal affordable housing trust. So that's the third block down. Yep. Um, Community food assessments examine a town's food system, which could include analysis of food supply and demand, economic development through food processing or distribution, increased food production of farmland, increased food access for residents, and other elements. And then um, the other so, one is yeah. so so on on that issue. You know, just so so people when when they talk about. Food assessments. It's not necessarily just growing food. It's it's the ability to to get food to people that need the food, right. um, and and not only food, just food, but healthy food as well. Mm -hmm. So it's there, there's actually a lot. Sometimes people misunderstand yeah. what what that's all about. So it, and, and it's a very it's a a very is a very important topic that I think that we should look at. Scott, uh, Sherry, is is this is this uh, technical assistance request? This is going to be run by the COG, and I look at this as maybe being a little bit open ended, right? Yeah. And it seems that you're looking at the town. Is it their approach to take a look at this regionally? Because if it's the town's food system, I'd be surprised to see if that is uh, ever comes to some conclusion. I I th I don't think it, I don't think it's going to be for the town. I think it I think it's for the, the regional it's for our region. Uh, it's it, it's try to it's try to do, do it on a regional basis, mm -hmm. Scott. I, I look at that if I could, Mr. Chair. I look at that right up against the second block, which is local uh, multi hazard mitigation plan. You can't have uh, all of the food production and delivery system without having a decent mitigation plan. Right. We're going to talk later about ditches. So uh -huh. I think there's, you know, there's some, there's some tie there. I had, I had, I had marked that one down as well. I didn't okay. To Studio your thunder, but I think they're oh, tied good. together. Yeah, um, and even part of the emergency preparedness Correct. as we're moving forward with that. We usually, and always have that one on our list. Yeah. Yeah. We want to okay. make sure that everyone has access to. Food. What else did you have? Um, downtown or village center economic development mm -hmm. project. Yep. Conduct a survey to understand what residents, businesses, and visitors want in downtown. I think um, that's <clears throat> important. And then um, develop a master plan uh, chapter for economic development. We've done the housing one, mm -hmm. 
Um, and so um, there are other elements that are part of the master plan, so that might be a likely next choice, especially if we're looking at downtown and um, the eco-ag and how mm -hmm. that may play into like economic development. <clears throat> I noticed there's culvert okay. assessments on there too. There was one I thought, um, oh, um, Foster Municipal Engagement Involvement um, was one that I was looking at as well um, for Citizens Academy and succession planning. We're starting to see turnover now, mm -hmm. so it would be. Um, Oh, and, and one of the things that I'd like to prioritize, sh Sherry, is the abandoned property. Mm -hmm. um, we do have a few There's abandoned. There's something going on now with that, I think, too. Okay. Yeah, I, I think we, you know, and, and I think it's a way, mm -hmm. we, we have a few places in town, three okay. or four, that, yeah. that I can think of off the top of my head. Mm -hmm. And sometimes we run, always run into a brick wall and we start to talk about those yeah, things. Okay. So, so okay. That, that would help. I know that's that's a concern of Mr. Bennett's also. For other planning projects, I wrote in ditches. Abandoned properties. <laughs> oh, okay. yeah. If that's something that the COG might be able to help us with. As and it's well. on your list. Well, and you've got like culvert assessments, though, so I think yeah. that's kind of tied into it. Tied too. Have that written down. Um, age and dementia friendly region. So, so why don't why don't we put together some numbers and we can talk about it next meeting? Okay. okay. Thank you. Um, going through the um, community development strategy, mm -hmm. trying to pair up things. Um, Makes sense. Some of these are, have overlap with priorities of town <coughs> that spelled out. Re resignation, Mr. Ch Mr. Clerk. Let's see if I can get in there. Hang on. I'm almost at calls analysis, Chief. Thank you. <laughs> Two, you three, like those stats? Four. Hang <coughs> on. Speed. Almost there. Uh, STM. Oh, you got yours in color. Hang on. The end. There you go. Sherry, after giving it a significant amount of thought, I've decided to take a break from municipal volunteer services and resign my current volunteer positions on planning, conservation commission, finance, pathways. It's been a pleasure to work with everyone. Dan Murphy. He did include capital with uh, that as well. I was well. hoping I you wouldn't. In with the All end. right. Yeah. Okay. Well, planning board's an elected position, so we have to notify the town clerk. Okay. So. Okay. And and the planning board. All right. Move to accept with regret. Uh, and motions second. made and seconded. All those in favor, signify by saying aye. Aye. Please, you're on that, Sherry. With regrets, please. Um, mm -hmm. Appointment for the ditch committee. Dear Town Administrator, please put my request to be on the Ditch Committee. Thank you. Um, Mark Zinen. Mark Zinen? Yep. Nice. And, and we also had two other people, didn't we? We have, yeah, look at him. I know we have one other one. Jerry ones. Bach and uh, Stanley. Uh, Michkowski. Michkowski. Yep. Would you like to be on that, Bruce? Yeah. I have concerns about the ditches. Okie dokie. Nice. All right, so at this time, I'd like to, uh, to ask for a motion to appoint Bruce Bennett, Mark Zinen, Jerry Bach, and Stanley Michkowski. So moved. Second. <clears throat> and we got Dave Pierce, so we have five. I think that'd be, that'd be a nice size. All right, so we have a motion made and seconded to Unless there's any interest from the, uh... <laughs> <laughs> I don't have time to take anything else. Yeah. <laughs> Try, we can't, yeah, hey, we tried to set the hook. What the, <laughs> be ad hoc. Yeah. All right, so uh, all those in favor, signify by saying aye. Aye. We, did you say aye too? I did. No, it was Jerry, he was up there. <laughs> oh, <that's laughs> Jerry said that. All right, so that's 3-0, uh, and uh, at this time, I'd like to make a, a entertain a motion for the select board member to that committee. Uh, move Dave Pierce participate. David Pierce. Uh, second. You are at the meeting, yeah, aren't you? Yeah, I know. So all those in favor, signify by saying aye. Aye. 
and Dave Pierce. So we round out that committee of five. We're working on the with the charge. We'll have the charge ready for next week, and we'll send you a copy of the charge. If there's any information that you want, you can read the studies that we have down downstairs, Sherry. You got mm -hmm. you got copies of those, right? Yes. We can get those out, or the guys can come in and take take a look at those and start going over. Um, now, my my just my <clears throat> hope is that this this initial committee is pretty much done by the end of the summer mm -hmm. between now and the end of the summer so and with a plan you know what we can do how we can do it and then we'll we'll start but we, we don't want to make this initial prospect a lengthy thing you don't want to make it a lengthy thing either do you jerry no i didn't think so so uh hopefully we'll be able to get so we have we have a boatload of information that that you can that can be read okay Chief, you want to start on your, uh, Elliot, okay if we start with the Chief right now? I think so. You know, it's, uh, <clears throat> okay. Chief. Thank you. Thank you. Um, so I did present uh, some of the paperwork we had. The graphs that you have should be in color. If you don't, then uh, just know that the top one with, before the line was green. That was this year. And the bottom one with the line underneath it, that's... Um, in some respects, 2017 or 2014. It's just showing a difference, uh, difference in years. If you'd like to see the color copies, I can pass them around, no problem. Uh, it shows a call analysis for the time of day, um, and then the, for 17 and 14, and then the other one is the days of the week. And then what that would reflect is just the amount of calls that the police department has had through its dispatch service. Um, and those range from all different types of calls, from motor vehicle complaints to motor vehicle accidents to uh, arrests, uh, building checks, um, trees in the road, things like that. So any, anything that a police officer could go to, uh, medical calls, uh, any, anything a police officer can go to, uh, that's the reflection. So you can see on the time of day, the difference between um, you know, midnight and six, and then back again at 7 a.m. and it picks back up again. Uh, so the letter I wrote to the uh, board explains uh, that graph and also explains uh, two forms that I downloaded from the website, uh, the internet, for um, uniform crime reporting. And uniform crime reporting shows, because uh, we had, had not previously reported our incidents to the state, um, mm. so we started doing that shortly after I got hired, uh, or at least I couldn't find the last time we did it, um, we believe it was about 10 years prior to that. Hmm. So we made sure we did it up for 2016, uh, and then we did it right along for 2017. And now that we're in 2019, we have until, uh, I think it's March 15th to report it for 2018. And that gives you a good reflection on the types of offenses, Group A and Group B, from anywhere from uh, a sex crime to a drug crime, a violent crime, nonviolent crime. Uh, so those forms reflect a much smaller number than what I told you on the form here. Uh, the reason being is on my letterhead, uh, I reflected all the types of calls that we deal with as well as some of the motor vehicle. Uh, a lot of the motor vehicle offenses don't usually show up on that. Uh, and when I say that, I mean like, you know, <coughs> driving without a license, no insurance, um, things of that nature. The stuff like that doesn't really show up on the, uh, the UCR. The UCR is big with, like I said, group A and group B offenses. And then you can see how that reflects to other departments, our size, or departments much larger than ours. And you can see um, where we stand as far as uh, our per capita and population. Uh, that being said, I presented the uh, budget request. And a lot of it was contract or union uh, agreed to terms a few years ago. So that shows a reflection of an increase. Um, the only thing that's different with this is based upon the call analysis and the call for service, uh, I'm coming to the town asking for an uh, additional full-time officer. And that's reflective on the, um, on the budget. Uh, between that and the non-addition, uh, together that's about a $90,000 increase. Without it, we would, if we were to take out the full-time position uh, in any contract agreements, with that specific position, um, we would remove about forty-six thousand dollars from that equation, bringing this down to about thirty-five. Uh, and thirty-five is only reflected on 
um, an increase based upon, like I said, contract in the union um, uh, agreement with the town. So uh, I can get into specifics about what these graphs ref re reflect if you, if you would like, um, even though it, it shows you the time of the day and uh, the days of the week that we have. Uh, I could pull up the types of calls, but if you're not familiar with those, it does get kind of um, boring or annoying or whichever favorite term you <laughs> want to use. Um, we, we did, we're part of the State Police Dispatch, and they did just recently upgrade their system a little bit in a more robust situation where a lot of the calls for service are now being uh, handled a certain way. Uh, before, it was kind of a, a hodgepodge setup, and they really fine-tuned a lot of things, and it's a lot more user-friendly for the officer and the administrative staff and all the departments in Franklin County. Um, this graph only reflects actually 10 months of the 12 months because I wasn't able to pull my January and February data. Uh, that was on our old system. And with all the computer and, and email stuff that we've been having lately, um, I can't get into the old system. So I have to get someone from the company to remote in and try to mm -hmm. fix that. But that's separate from the town. It won't cost us anything. Uh, just a matter of trying to get that figured out. I don't see it changing the top graph anymore, uh, other than maybe adding a few more numbers to it. But uh, as you can see, the top graph to the bottom graph, it's already um, quite ahead of what we used to do. Um, also, when I first started here, the officers were uh, reporting things to dispatch, but also keeping their own log on uh, a computer at the station. Mm -hmm. And if you remember, some of those calls, some of those logs used to be sent to the paper or, or used to be posted. Mm -hmm. That's where that came from. It didn't really get posted from the dispatch center, because that was run by state police. Now that we have uh, a really good uh, access to the system, we can go in and pull up different types of calls and see uh, what day is, is, is uh, busier, what time of the day is busier, and we can get into uh, even officer, individual officers, to see what they're pulling up. As you know, uh, one officer versus another one, uh, if that officer works days one week or, or midnights another week or whatever it is, we'd be able to see where they're the busiest and get into that type of, um, that type of setup. So um, I know you guys are looking at the black and whites, but if you want, I'll just give it so you can pass it around. The green is reflective of 2018 on all four of the charts. Um, the one, if you're looking at yours, the black and white, the one with the spike, that's the 2018 one. Yeah. Uh, and if you look below that, you'll see a dark line going across. That's 2017 uh, and 2014, depending on what year you have. Right. The, the ones that are three quarters of the page, that's the days of the week. So you can see um, Wednesdays are quieter than Thursdays, uh, and Wednesdays are quieter than Sundays, historically. Um, and that's just all computer-driven uh, data that we were able to pull up from the, from the system. Um, I, just, I think it's, uh, it's interesting because uh, there, there are some that always question, well, why do we have police on detail on Sunday? Because there's nothing ever happens yeah. on a Sunday. Well, crime um, doesn't know jurisdiction or time of day. Um, so it could happen in a city or a small town and they could drive right through or something could happen. I and mean, let's face it, if, if I need, uh, I'm, a, I'm, a, I'm a citizen and I need help, I'm not gonna go, oh yeah, wait, they don't have anyone on Sundays, I'll wait till tomorrow. You're still gonna call. It's like, you know, and just from the data, it's data shows that Sunday's actually not the quietest day. It's not. Uh, it's, it's busier than Wednesdays, uh, go figure. Yeah. Um, the days of the week are pretty busy. Uh, granted, we have a lot more motor vehicle traffic than uh, I've historically dealt with in the past. Yep. Uh, so we've had to make sure our scheduling covers a lot of that. Uh, but obviously we can't be everywhere uh, at the same time. So we try to spread it around and, and move officers to different locations, um, north part of town, south part of town, in the center, uh, and try to cover everything. Um, and that's not to say there are some times where there are no calls. And, and that's, that's definite, that, obviously that happens. Um, so the officers at that time, when there are no calls, aren't just sitting at the station. They're checking on buildings, uh, following up on investigations, um, and uh, well, just I, patrolling just, the town. If I could, I, yeah. if I could Chief, um, we, we received an email um, from the fire chief right. today, 
and and well, what what do the police do? And there was an incident at a, a facility, local facilities that has recently closed, that they the police were making the, the safety check and all of a sudden found water flowing out of the building. Well, that building had um, no other residents were in it, and the sprinkler system had froze and water was coming. Right. Pipes had broken, water was coming out of it. Now, is is that a bad thing? Well, if you look at the fact that our water supply is, is you know, that's a finite yeah. number of gallons of water that's in the ground, it is a big concern. Mm -hmm. But that's just one thing. And again, if you didn't have the officers out doing their checks, they would never have never had found that. So Exactly. Uh, and it's unfortunate that, that that property had to suffer like that, but um, that's just one example of, of many that the officers come upon. Um, so you can see by the color graph, it's a little bit easier to see than the black and white, that um, we have been under-reporting. Um, and like I said, when I first started, the, uh, the logs were kind of like a daily log on the computer, and there was really no way to pull up any data from that. Uh, other than what we could rely on dispatch. And it's no fault of theirs, they, they take in what was given to them. Uh, so they, they were doing their job effectively. And then you can see that um, the spike in just the day of the week, uh, especially starting with the daytime, it's not because the day shift is more gung-ho than the midnight shift, cool. it's just there are other things. People are waking up, there's more traffic, and that's why you see that spike. On the days of the week, you'll see it's pretty constant. Um, Monday is a little bit busier than Sundays because most people work Monday through Friday or there's school in session so there's different things going on with people being out and about with, uh, with traffic there so the calls for service increase on Mondays uh, over Sundays um, so we also show 2014 compared to 2017 that's uh, in the color one it's the one in red uh, on yours it's the bottom part of the, the, the graph uh, you'll see that not much has changed and that's because that's the information that was given to dispatch sure. at the time. It wasn't included as, it wasn't, it wasn't including the data that the officers put into the, the computer at the station. So that's why the 2018 is reflective of that. And even 2019, 2019 when, when I'm here next year, we'll even reflect that uh, change as well. Maybe not that dramatic though. So I want to just double check. So this isn't that there are now we have as many calls, it's just better recording of the calls or different? Much calls better reporting of the calls. Recording, yes. Yeah. I mean, the calls for service have gone up, but not three times as much. Yeah. Um, yeah. The, the numbers on the side, that's just a, a scale. That's not how many calls there are. Like it says no, okay. 600 yeah. so that's, calls. That's on 600 calls. On average, that's 600 calls for every Sunday, 50, you know, 52 Ten weeks months. or 52 Sundays. Oh, for the whole year? For the whole year. Yeah. Oh, okay. That's okay. the average okay. for the, average okay. for the, for the <laughs> Sunday. Okay. Okay. Yeah. So, so if you, yeah. So if you look at the, the data from the dispatch center, in 2014, the police department had 1,449 calls for service. In 2018, there was 4,877. So, even just last year, last year it was 1,704. So we went up 3,000 calls for the year. And the reason why is because it's better reporting by the officers. The officers are still doing their same job, but instead of just noting it on the notebook or the computer screen at, at inside their uh, booking room, they're actually reporting it either through the MDT, the mobile data terminal in the cruiser, or reporting it at the station computer, which goes to dispatch. Uh, we have a regional dispatch, and we have a regional dispatch reporting system, so we're able to share a lot of this information with the other towns in Franklin County um, at no extra cost, and the, the state was able to upgrade their system so not only could you know, we see our calls, but I can see if Deerfield's on a call or if Waitley's on a call and vice versa. We can see that information. And that helps uh, alert the officers to something where they may not have heard it on the radio. Uh, so if I'm doing radar on North Main Street and I see that you know, Deerfield's responding to a two or three car accident on Sugarloaf Street, and I see it on the computer, but I didn't hear it on the radio, then I could call over on the radio and say, I'm available if you need assistance. If not, then they don't need anything. Or if there's a, a, a breaking and entering, 
where they may not have gone over the radio with it, but it's on the computer, and I see it's right down the street, I might position myself closer to the town line to see if anyone's fleeing and coming that way. So it's a better reporting, but it's also a good information sharer between the agencies. Uh, the system that we use is uh, from a company that's changed names like five times, uh, but historically the, the system's been known as IMC, um, and that system was based out of Grafton. Mm -hmm. A lot of agencies in Massachusetts utilize it, so because of that, they have a regional hub. So not only uh, could I see this information on who's on duty or what calls they have, I can then, when I'm entering the system, uh, say for a motor vehicle accident or uh, I respond to a domestic or, or whatnot, and I enter that system, information into the system, I'm then also able to dip into the hubs that are around the state. So we had uh, uh, an assault and battery take place at, um, one of the apartment complexes, and the person kind of thought he might know who it was, but it wasn't really sure, the, the suspect, and we put that information into that system, mm -hmm. and I got a hit on uh, a department uh, southwest of here that had dealt with that same person. Mm -hmm. Luckily, I was able to get from their report what cases they've dealt with, yeah. whereas the state system that we use for warrants and everything else, it wouldn't have had it on there. All that shows you is, has that person been charged and have they been found guilty? Whereas this system can show you if there's an investigation going on, and it might tie into um, a, a string of robberies or breaking and enterings, and it meets a certain MO of a, of a suspect. And look at patterns and everything. Yeah, else. and it works out well. So we've been able to work a lot with that, and, and I know it's helped out some of the other agencies in the county as well. So it's only going to make our department better, sure. and we're thankful for that. But this is the, the first step. It shows a, the proper reflection of what the officers actually do do during the day or during the shift instead of what we think that they used to do. So that said, Chief, yeah. we're collecting information in a, in a more uh, real-time fashion and it's broader based. I get that. Why does that equate to a, an additional headcount full-time? So with, the, uh, the, with that data coming forward, it, it, it was always a question to me why there were sometimes things seem like we were always busier uh, with the uh, staffing level that we had. Uh, and then was able to, when I was able to pull this up, I was able to then reaffirm to myself, okay, this is why. We've got information showing that we have that, again, not three times as much, but we do have more calls than we've, we've had in the past. Uh, and then get going from there, the information since I've been here, we've been able to take part in, and thankfully, through the uh, Franklin County Regional Governments, a lot of the motor vehicle traffic mm -hmm. and the increase with that. So in general, the, the last time the department had had an increase was about 17 years ago. Uh, and I feel that the increase of the call volume and the demand on the officers as well as the motor vehicle traffic, because we haven't even scratched the surface on that. We're doing about 500 stops a year. Um, and a department this size with that much traffic, we should probably be doing more. Mm -hmm. um, but uh, it's not enough to uh, make a dent in this. Uh, 500. I think the last number I had was 540 motor vehicle stops, and about only 40 or 45 percent of that are receiving tickets. Um, and that, that's all together. That's uh, civil infractions, criminal infractions, or um, summons. Yeah. But there have been increases in the part-time staffing in recent years. So are you using that capacity fully? Part-time staffing, yeah. So part-time staffing has been able to assist us with shift coverage and with um, benefit time time off requests mm -hmm. we have been able to use the part-timers uh, a little bit more freely because the part-timers we were kind of limited down to and, and no fault of anyone here or, or in the department just the, the pool wasn't there to pick from but we've had more candidates come up and we've had the ability to put more part-timers on and that's great uh, a full-time officer would put somebody on the road 40 hours a week uh, guaranteed and then they would be on that position whereas a part-timer it kind of bounces around uh, they're required to, to only really give up two shifts a month, uh, minimum, mm -hmm. and uh, some of them do more than that, some of them do that minimum, uh, and we would like to have more um, coverage anyways. Uh, there are some times where we have uh, an arrest and the officer is tied up, if they, that officer is the only one on, that officer is uh, tied up with an arrest or going to court and then there's nobody on in town, and then the state police are covering the town until we get back, uh, or in that time frame. Uh, we have looked at different times of trying to get more part-timers to cover the open shifts, but with the arrests and the different calls where they, they might not, uh, we'll, the different arrests or calls that may happen that we can't 
assume that's going to happen, and so we're not going to double staff all the shifts because if we do that, we would kill our budget. Should we cut back on the part time budget then if you get a full time person? If you cut back on the part time coverage and you add a full time person, the full time person would cover the shifts that would be required, but the part time officers are covering the open shifts that are not covered by that position or any benefit time. So vacation, personal, sick time. So you need some, but yeah. would you, it sounds like you wouldn't need the same level of part time coverage as you have now then. Well, the expectation of the part-timers would still be present as far as the amount of shifts available to them. Mm -hmm. um, I think if we add on a, a full-time police officer, their position mm -hmm. would then have some benefit time. So what you mm -hmm. gain with some of the full-timer, you could take some away from the, from the part-time, but you don't want to drastically cut it in half mm -hmm. because by doing that, you're now taking away from the benefit time of everyone else. When we're covered by the state police is that the Northampton barracks? Uh, yeah, so the <laughs> physical body comes from Northampton, but the dispatch comes from Shelburne. Right. So it's still both state police, but they call each other. Yeah. yeah. So it's an extra. Sometimes it's an extra 5, 10, 15 minutes, yeah, depending on where they are. A lot of times you'll have a yeah, yeah, patrol yeah. on 91 that's you know, a couple minutes away. Yeah. 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 They'll but send the closest guy. They will, yeah. And sometimes, I mean, they're state, so. If uh, there's someone from Shelburne that's closer, they'll come. Yeah. They'll come over. We're right. We're kind of right, right on your lines. Yeah, we're right in the middle. So we've got Athol Barracks going that way. And we've got Shelburne and we've got Northampton. So and then Belchertown. So we've got a mix. So if, if we have a needed uh, police presence, heavy police presence, we, we're able to get those four barracks to come in, as well as the neighboring towns as well. Uh, but how often uh, would you estimate uh, in a year that's that's happened where uh, the state has has had to respond to something here because we've had an officer at a court or something so in the in the past in 2018 um i don't want to give you a number that i'm i'm not 100 percent sure of but if i'm thinking correctly there have been a couple of uh more than a couple of times a month that is, that that does that does occur i'm sorry um were there they're covering or were they respond they've responded Couple times per month. Okay. Yes. We've definitely been able to have a lot of our own officers cover the shifts, and um, whether it be you know a, a mixture of me holding over or coming in or officers doing the same, um, we do have a, a swing shift that works a seven P to three A on some of the nights. So we're able to sometimes even move them a little bit if need be. Um, we have to stay within the restrictions with the union before we you know, uh, also notify part-timers. Uh, we obviously try to get part-time coverage first because that's uh, at straight pay, whereas a full-time coverage would be overtime if it's above and beyond the 40 hours. With the, if there's another full-time position, would you expect the overtime to go down with that additional coverage or would this be another added expense of more overtime than for that full-time person well the overtime is only really there because of some of the coverage that hasn't been available by part-time so the expectation is that the overtime would go down um, I've been doing this for 12 years I can tell you that doesn't always happen because sometimes when you have the same staffing or more staffing uh, sometimes things come up that you don't generally know about. Um, you won't know when there's going to be a B&E or uh, a situation where you need more officers. Or, in some cases, when the police officers are, and this is what we've seen before we've even approached increasing the staff, when the officers are more active and they're out dealing with calls and they end up going to court, they get paid overtime to go to court and not stay on duty. The only person, you know, there's only really two people that historically don't get overtime I don't get any overtime, so it doesn't matter if I work and I have 100 arrests a year by myself or I don't, because when I go to court, I'm on duty. So I'll, you're paying me to be here anyways. That also is reflective on the day shift officer. So the other officer that we have on the day shift, um, three days a week, if court shows up during those three days, then that officer doesn't get overtime because that officer is already on duty and getting paid. The other officers are working evenings or overnights and on weekends. They would then get the overtime to go to court. So she could could you um could you provide could you provide us with a sample duty schedule 
if you had an extra officer, how, how, how that how that officer or how how you would break up your uh, your schedule? I could, yeah, and I'd, I'd be using the data for the for the the, the busier days, yeah, because we have a pretty good coverage for uh, in some respects two officers per shift on um, sixteen hours a day on. kind of weird so five out of the seven days but then there's like a fourth day that it's, it's half covered but half not right uh, but there's still an officer on 24 7 but I could draft up a schedule that would be reflective of yeah, just so we could we have position. we could have a look yeah. at look at that oh most definitely yeah, okay. and I can I can forward it to you um, so the the form that you have for the uh, the budget I don't I don't know if you want me to break it down any further but sure. uh, I think I put in there that the uh, the cost of living, um, I'm sorry, the contract agreement mm -hmm. uh, and the only increase for the expenses would have been the additional uniform allowance. Mm -hmm. um, and then the police clerk is the only non-union or non-contract, so I didn't know if that was going to go up at all. Uh, the other ones, the part-time wages, the overtime wages, and full-time wages are uh, contract negotiated, mm -hmm. uh, and that's why there's an increase there. Chief, when, when they're, they're talking, they've been talking the last few years about uh, changing the uh, the dispatch radios and going yes. to the 800 megahertz versus the 400. Yes. Have you heard anything about that, and have you had you have you had input into that? So we have discussed it at some of the Franklin County Chiefs meetings. Um, EOPS was looking at doing an earmark or some type of dollar amount, um, but they believe that there might be some federal money coming up because of the change with um, the House uh, midterm elections. So with that being said, they, from what I gather, they don't want to um, state how much money they're gonna be able to give out to Franklin County for the radio project. They are looking at it because the FERCOG project is aging, there's a lot of holes in it, and there have been a lot of uh, reception issues. Right. Um, if you remember, prior to me being hired, the town of Wayson appropriated just around $6,600 for radios. Um, when I came on, they told me about that, but I had also learned about the radio issue two and a half years ago. So we opted not to use any of that because why would I buy a brand new radio that could potentially be used for two Absolutely. or three years? It's yeah. not, Absolutely. it's futile. It's not uh, fiscally responsible to use the money that way. So that being said, I don't know exactly how much is going to go towards Franklin County. There's been numbers tossed around about maybe, you know, in the upwards of $10 million, but we don't know. I don't know 100% if that's the case. Yeah, I, I was just I, I was I was more concerned on coverage. Um, well, we did we did radio testing, and I was able to take one of the portables that they have, and the portable outputs a lot less of a wattage, so I was able to bring that around town. So so now are your radios analog on 400? Analog, yes. They're not yeah, they are analog, yep. and the new radios will be digital. I believe they're supposed to be digital. Yes. Hmm. And, and on an 800 band yeah and, and I, yeah I was just wondering I was just wondering if you and I, I would be concerned I mean there are, are a little different mm -hmm. than the rest of some par other parts of Franklin County since we have we have uh, complexes that, yep. that that sometimes are difficult for you guys to punch into through yep. with the radios most definitely and I, I was just wondering if there has been any conversation and, and we don't have as many dead spots as some of some towns. Mm -hmm. We're, we're lucky. I mean, Leverett has a lot of dead spots. Um, some of the buildings say uh, cliffside, the buildings that are closest to the cliff. Mm -hmm. Those resulted in more of a potential issue than, say, the ones by I building over towards one, uh, 116. Mm -hmm. right. uh, those were a little bit easier. When you get down to the basement apartments, those have a little bit of issues. Um, but we haven't, we haven't seen too much of an issue. Uh, when we're doing some of the radio testing, I know the fire department went around with the same type of radio oh. and tested as well because the idea is it's, it's not just police, it's going to be police and fire and right. potentially yeah. EMS, and then that Makes way it's, it's going to cover everybody. Um, of course, with that is a cost. A portable that I wear on my hip could cost anywhere between 600 to $1,000 per radio. Mm -hmm. Not these radios. These radios are anywhere between 4500 to 7000 per radio. Um, and that's not even counting what's in the cruiser, uh, but. And everything has to be replaced because they're not compatible. Oh, they're not compatible at all. Yeah. You can't do a, yeah, right. you can't do any of that. And, and the infrastructure that the radio system is on, uh, there's a lot of different theories on what's going on, but with the 
network of towers that they have. Some say there's too many towers. Some say there's not enough, we can put up more. But when you have a simulcast system, if you have multiple antennas talking at once, you're bound to get a lot of pushback. So maybe less towers is uh, more appropriate, but I'm not the radio guy. Um, I would rely on the, those uh, personnel to give us the expert opinion. The issue though is state police has successfully gone from Boston to Berkshires, and now they're working backwards from Berkshires to Boston. Mm -hmm. They put in a whole new 800 truncated system, and then they began with making it, because by the time it took them that long to get there, they were like, oh yeah, there's a thing called digital. Mm -hmm. So now they're trying to outfit their system to be digital, and they started at Berkshires and they're working backwards. Um, so digital is already out here with state police, uh, and they're using it, uh, environmental police are using it. So there's a lot of pros and cons to it. Um, I think that it would help a lot of the towns uh, with coverage, because a coverage on a, uh, a on a radio would be uh, better suited than, say, a cell phone. You go to some of these towns and the cell phone signal drops off, right. and it's not the not same type of center. Some of them. Yeah, not well, I, I would have, I, I mean, I've mentioned because I know it's a huge expense. It could potentially be a huge expense that we're, we're not ready, that we're not ready for. Yeah. Um, and, I, and I think, and in, in just, just what I know about the Franklin County, our, our radio system, is it's, it's antiquated. It's, it's very it's very difficult to maintain. They have troubles maintaining. They mean they have trouble maintaining the system. So we may see a very um, we we may it, we may do it before we need to do it and not be able to plan for it. Let's put it that way. So true. And, there was supposed just, to be a public hearing or a meeting at some point coming up. There there is. Um, I I know that the 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 FERCOG is trying to hire someone um, to kind of oversee it. But I, I know when we put it in, it was it was while well, they're talking. Last I heard was seven to eight to nine million dollars to put the system in and in and in to maintain it, and that doesn't include the cost that we would have to incur on new on new radios and stuff. So you could very easily drop. I mean, you you're, you're going to have to at least what, and and for us, it's not just the police, but the fire mm -hmm. as right. well. So and if 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 there's two radio vendors right now, uh, one's Motorola and one's Kenwood, um, and they're about the same. Depends on what you want for features, but they're about the same. And the cheapest one I think we've been able to see is about forty-two or forty-six hundred dollars, and that's just affordable. Um, and the dig and the digital is, and you'll get better. You you won't have the drop in to drop in and out like you do with the analog. So you'll you either hear it or you don't. Yeah, you either hear it or you don't. Whereas sure. now it's sometimes you get static. Right, so you're either here or not, so. All right, uh, other questions for the chief? Is there uh, any, are there any promotions where you can do like a sample and where you could uh, lease one for a week or something and do a test run and find all the test out where all the- On the radios? Spots the so town. yeah, so yeah. The, the state was able to give us, uh, we were able to sign them out and try them out. So we tried them out in the police department and we also then had the fire department take it. They, uh, they went up into the woods, you know, because they're going to be called out for uh, search and, rescues. And, and rescues more than, you know, we're going to be there assisting them, but they're going to be out there looking. So they, they tried a couple of places out there. I don't want to speak for the fire chief, but I think he said it was decent coverage. There were some places, like I said, some of the basements of some of the build, bigger buildings. Uh, I know that the buildings up against the cliff, so M, N, R, and S mm -hmm. were having some issues in the basements at least. Um, but we have those issues now with the radios we have now. Right. Uh, but other than that, we had a pretty good coverage townwide. You aren't going to get 100% coverage no matter what you get. No, no. Uh, and, well, we're lucky too is between the troopers that have come to some of the meetings, some of the environmental police, they've been, out, been able to explain to us that they've seen it come from what it used to be to what it is now, and they, they rather the system that is there now because they, they do have better coverage. Sure. And they, that makes more sense. clarity when you, when you make a call or you receive a call. You can hear the, 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 the coordinates or where you're supposed to go, whereas before you're trying to listen to the squelch and see what did they say, Bay Street or May Street, or where am I going? So um, it's been interesting, but uh, it's, it's, it's going to be a costly, costly uh, move either way. It is going to cost money. Most You're right, the four thousand dollars is on the cheap side. At times. On the cheap side, yeah, and it doesn't mean it's a piece of junk. It's just the cheapest way you can go, and that's again just a portable, not the the cruiser radio. Scott, do you have any questions? Uh, no, not at this point, Mr. Chair. David, questions? Uh, I'm good right now. All set. Yeah. 
Phillies. Mm-hmm. Just about mm-hmm. how many of those units are we looking at again? So right now we have uh, we have four mobiles in the cruisers, um, and portables we have seven or eight. And, and to be clear, this isn't being implemented in the 2020 budget cycle. This is a longer, little longer range. A little longer range. Right. Uh, we have to wait and see what information it's, we can get from the federal side. Mm-hmm. If the federal side can have some type of earmark or money towards uh, radios, then that's great. That's less money the state has to come up. But I know EOPS was looking into mm-hmm. um, helping out Franklin County because um, we were able to bring that, not we, but the people part of the radio project, was able to bring that to um, you know, senators, representatives, and the governor and explain to them the issues they were having. Sure. Uh, it's an antiquated system. It's been, in, been around for a few years now, and it's just, we, we live and we're part of a very hilly terrain. Right. If it was out in Kansas and you had a straight shot, then you'd be lucky. And sure. Just, and this is, this again, is a second stage after the basic infrastructure is built out. Yeah, you have to have you the have existing have infrastructure the, before you can turn over correct. it. I totally You can't it. do it all at once and be like, well, keep, it's supposed to work in a couple yeah, of months. I'm just keeping it in context. People watching this will go, when are we buying the radios? Well, they won't talk to anything right now. Yeah. Well, and we'll be able to listen to state police, but we won't be able to talk to them. I agree. And the, the mobile units, uh, the portables you said are around 4500 for... A good bargain. Yeah, four thousand five hundred for the portables. That's the minimum amount. And there's, of course, higher ones. Mm-hmm. Um, so I don't. I haven't received a quote, uh, only because I didn't feel it was necessary for me to get one um, for a cruiser. Okay. But from what I've discussed with other chiefs who have gone and done that route because they want to be able to listen to state police and and, and discuss with them because they they have ninety one going through their town or whatever uh, to outfit a cruiser effectively with an eight hundred radio and repeater. Uh, was between ten and thirteen thousand per car. What's the lifetime of that radio? Well, I mean, these radios have been around for what ten years minimum, so that radio should be around for at least ten years, if not more. Um, I remember when I started back in the '90s, some of those radios were '70s, so twenty years at that point. Um, you know, the systems always get upgraded. Uh, hopefully, it's not after five years you have to upgrade it like your cell phone. Um, some system like that should be able to last longer. Five years. Got to upgrade those every year, don't you? You know, I, 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 I hope my daughter's not watching. No, every five years is good. I need to replace replacing on the cell phone. Nice. I'm sure. I'm sure she's not watching. I'm, just, I'm sure. She's not watching. <laughs> I'm sure she's not watching. Yeah. And if, and if, she's, if she is, thing. you need to I'll talk to her. I'll find out the minute her. I walk home. You need home, to talk yeah. to her yeah. about getting a life. But uh, and, and again, the only reason I mention is because you know. To me, it, it you know they, we've been they've been talking about it at the cog for the last three years, right. mm-hmm. so they've been talking about it for a number actually longer than that. Mm-hmm. So they've been talking about it, and I see I see it happening, and, mm-hmm. and no one knows would know about it. And right. all of a sudden, here you are with a uh, fifty thousand dollar bill, and it's not like we were replacing the radios that we had, which were analog on a four hundred megahertz. Totally different frequencies and everything, so you're going to a different frequency, the whole and you're change. going to a diff, di- different format. So, yeah, and, and it should, and so it's like you don't have a choice to if you're going to want the radio, you're going to do that. Well, and if you want to be part of the dispatch service, right, exact right. 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 same thing, rather than your own little island. Right. So, anything yeah. more yeah. in? Uh, Sunland's overall pretty safe place to live. Well, it was it was online, so it's got to be true. <laughs> no, it was it online? It was online, but but oh. that was also before we were reporting our, our incidents to UCR. So we went from zero to now, you know, a bunch. So you can thank me for reporting it to the federal government. If we don't get that delineation after. Okay. That kind of data is important, though. It is. It is, and we can always go from it. I mean, out of that data helped us get a, uh, a twenty thousand dollar grant. Uh, a couple of months ago, so that's for equipment. Yep. We're using it with right. the schools as well. So plus, it helps you do your job better. Well, yeah. And every other officer. So definitely. Right. Thanks so much, right. Chief. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. You better recap your ditch conversation. Yeah. yeah. So we're all done with the ditches. We're, we we got it all figured out, Stanley. We're all we're all set. Start tomorrow. Yeah. Yeah. If you want. Um, but basically, basically the only thing what we were doing tonight with the ditches was we were appointing the committee and we forgot DeWitt. Yeah, we're going to have to up the number of people on the committee. Move to, move to include DeWitt. All right. We're,
The motion, motion includes the wet. Second. Most of the stuff is in open ground. What's that? Most, most of the stuff that you're going to do it is, is in open ground. It's only probably about half a mile that's got houses in here. Yeah. So uh, that should be easy. So in, in, in what, what we said earlier, Stanley, was that in, in my, what, what I would hope is that this, this is not a, a committee that's going to last um, for, for eight, nine, ten years. It's, it's basically a committee that, that it, it should start to work. We got a bunch of information down in the selectman's office. The, the committee can gra gather that information, read the information. Act, if people want to come in and read that information, is it online also, Sherry? No. Mm. It's too, yeah. yeah it's but if you want to come in to read, read the information, you're more than likely, more than more than uh, happy to come in to read the information that's fine but but basically when when we're going to finalize the uh, charge next next uh, Monday night but basically Tuesday not, yeah Tuesday. we can't do next Monday night next Tuesday, Tuesday night Tuesday. it's a holiday next Monday night. Well, can I ask you a question sure how deep will you be going and how wide will you be going uh, none, of well, that, none, none of that's determined. Yeah, we can't, yes, we can't yes, answer yes, that right now. And, and, and that's going to have to be, and that's going to have to be, you're going to have to look, talk to the Conservation Commission, mm -hmm. the, the EPA, the DEP, whomever, and all that's going to have to be, you know, we have to find out what, what our elevations are at, you know, someone's going to have to shoot grades at the, uh, the road crossings and such. So that there's, I mean, that, there's still work to be done. Yeah. You know, and you're, pro and you're probably in the hiring us. Uh, um, a civil engineering group that would have to come in and start, you know, to start to do some surveying and, and mapping. Um, and some of the mapping, I believe, has been done in the past. But and 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 not and, and there's a, there's actually a lot of work that has to get done. But I think if someone sits and does go through the information, the compiled information, I think somebody just has to go through all of that and put that all down on the paper. What we need to do. Yeah. So well, the sooner the sooner you can get it. This is the ideal time to do it. Because you can get on that ice and stay on it. It's it true, actually. Easy. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, some of the ice right now. I went through one of the holes. It's it's that deep right hmm. now. That, that'll hold the machine up. And you don't. You're not going to be out there with the machine. You're, you're going to be swinging from the side. Mm -hmm. Right. I think most of the excavation is going to be on the west side. There will be some on the other side, but most of it is on the west side. Yeah. And, and, and again, that's why, that's why the group will come together and they'll put all that information down, and, and, and I'm sure we'll have to talk to people. And then we've got to figure out how to pay for it, too, Stan. If you need any help, let me know. Yep. Okay, you're, nice help, yeah. you're going to be on that committee. Yeah. All right. We, are, we put your name down. I, I put your name down the day before. You, all right. You, you told me you were going to call me in two months, and you never did. I know. <laughs> two, two months ends Friday. He was keeping you under the clock. <laughs> I see. Any, any other ditch questions? All right. I would say if you plan on being on the committee, try to read that report. Get a copy of that because that's going to be a, a very important piece of information. Yeah. Um, because as I was going through working on the draft for the new charge, a lot of the issues that okay. were written up in the Ten old copies. draft at the time were resolved or covered by that report, so. When was that report done? Just so it doesn't disappear. Well, it's on, on the west side. It's I think within the last five years. Uh, right. The, the, the report June twenty seventh, twenty thirteen. Who did it? It was done by Colleen B. Sampson, professional MS candidate from the Fisheries, uh, Wildlife and Fisheries and Conservation. And so, Bruce, that was so there's a lot of good information. Steps to a filing for an NLI with the Conservation Commission. Okay. Yep. So that's, that's where all of that effort is, is led up to is a, turning it into a single NOI okay. and it stopped there because that was back during some real budget crunching right. at the time and also I went and mapped out just real quick because I don't want to get in the weeds on this but there was a great article um, in yeah. the Gazette that mapped out the rainfall for all the years and it's very interesting to, to note that the years that the issue becomes an issue here in town is usually the year after or the year that the rainfall is high. The last time this was addressed was back in 2012. Well, what do you know? That was the second highest rainfall compared to this year. So, um, but I highly recommend reading that report because you'll be, you'll be surprised to see some of the stuff that's in there. Um, and as you'll see in there, 
dredging and digging out surface channels is not necessarily going to resolve all the problems. So do your homework firsthand too, because there's going to be a lot of information in there. So. Okay. Yes, ma'am. Where's the report? In this line, our You know, how about if people that send an electronic. email? That one's electronic. That one, if you send me an email, yeah, I'll we can send email a copy to you. Because that might be easier to read it, you know, or print off pages you want. Yeah, I'll better just make a bunch of them. Like yeah, I can print it. Yeah, we can print something. Yeah, yeah it's, you definitely want to go through it. I'd like a copy. I have no problem with that, but like I said, make it easy for everybody. Just print them and. Yeah, whatever way is easy to get it to people. Yeah, we can do that. So then you really start this week? What's that, Steve? Are you really starting with this, this week? Yeah, I, I, I would hope so, yes. So I it's. have got a problem with, with the beavers now. I haven't seen them. I've been up and down that. Uh, I go about three times a week. I walk up and down through there. I haven't seen anything. Hmm. He's moved north. And I'm walking right <laughs> next to the water. So yeah. that, that's that's, that's behind kind your of one of those now. like it's related, but it's a separate problem. You know? Like I said, I'm, they come Jeremy, and go Jeremy too. Jeremy and I did a lot of digging up there. We stripped a lot of that grass out of there. Jerry's going to end up. Seeing them yeah. Pretty steady. Mm. I haven't gone. seen them now. Mm. Yes, sir. As a matter of fact, I've been moving north up the brook towards my property. I've been watching some activity over there, and he's uh, near my property and just below it used to be the Kibitis and Kibitis uh, property. Mm -hmm. he's, uh, he's traveling back and forth, chewing off bushes here and there, trying to make dams, and I keep pulling them out. So he's headed, headed north from Stanley's house. Well, I hate to say there, it, he's busy, a, huh? He's still there, out there. There, there is a process to uh, remove. They go to the board of health and shoot them. There, there, there is, there is a process. There is a process in place to. Uh, yes, they're dealing with beavers. That to deal with with. Uh, we gonna start seeing beaver hats on town. Yeah. Well, they go to the board, board of health. Board of health. Board of health is the one that. Yeah, the board of health is one that takes care of it. Yeah, Castro. They give you a so permit to shoot them. Right. I need. I don't know you or can trap shoot them, but yeah, you can do I, I know you yeah. can trap them. No. Anyway, so 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 Sherry's gonna Sherry's gonna sit, but I I would hope that we'd have the meeting. You know, the ditch committee would schedule first. As the members on the committee need to re read the report, and maybe next week they could hold their first meeting to move move it along. But but Dave, you could have to Dave will call the meeting. Okay. Any other questions about ditches? Um, no, I just I was just curious as how much you're gonna make it because. It was down at least two and a half feet from when you get to that culvert, from where it is now. Yep. And uh, it should stay even a little lower. That coming out of the culvert, that stone should be under the culvert, not on top of it, because that makes a hole, and that lets it all go down the river. Mm -hmm. So I mean, you're going to have to get in there and dig that out a little bit. Right. And somehow, um, when you're working in there, how are you going to control the water? It goes down. You're going to Block it off somehow, or what are you going to How are we going to control that? Yeah, I don't, I don't think we're yeah, there. I'm we can a mechanical that, yeah. guy. I'm a yeah. mechanical stand. I, mean, I, I, I leave it up to you, operators and uh, civils. Yeah, well, not me anymore. I'm retired from that. Oh, then, but, then you're perfect. You'll be able to watch that job the entire time. There you go. Uh, I'm, I'm fine with it. I mean, I, 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 I did enough time in them seats. I don't want any more. I've been so for, for years and years and years. I know what it feels like. Yes. <laughs> okay. You, you've seen what we've done. You see, look at the one we did in, in uh, the university. That was twenty something feet deep. We went down there. I know. No problem. I know. I saw it. But you got to have the right machine and the right person. And you and the right trench box. Yeah. You want to get in that hole. Well, we got it. We got the right <laughs> wrench when the guy come up with it, and he's telling me how to put it together. And I said, you can't. You 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 ask backwards. You're doing it wrong. So he went to call somebody, but by the time he got back, we were three panels down. He didn't know what to say. <laughs> no. <laughs> that's, well, you know, that's three, three, eight foot panels. Sure. And, and guess what? Guess what's in? We had a water main break up there today. Did you? Yeah. The same place? Uh, uh, very close. I almost had to call you. you wouldn't do me any good. I know. <laughs> I know. You. Th all right. All right. So, everybody all set? Mm -hmm. I think so. I think we're good. Set. All right. Anyone thank you. Have any questions? You're all set. Thanks, guys.
Thank you very much. DeWitt, you stop by and get a copy, okay? Yeah, All right. Thanks, thank guys. We have another meeting in next week or something? David, David will get back. As a matter of fact, make sure you get your email. We need your contact information, so we'll be doing it by email. So make sure you get that into Sherry. Yeah. Yeah, yeah I got my computer back at work so I can get it. Okay. Yeah, we did too. <laughs> it took a little while, but we yeah, did. I know. <laughs> well, yeah. Just All right, those smoke signals. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> all righty. Okay. Okay. We're all set with ditches <laughs> for now, <laughs> for today. All right, let's talk about special right, town meeting. Warren. Call to order, General Finance Committee, 725. All right. <coughs> so we have we have a special town meeting coming up on Monday, January 28th, uh, 7 p.m. It's at the elementary school, right? Mm -hmm. uh -huh. And um, so if I guess if I was to uh, to, to to run through the, the the special, we're down to nine articles now, Sherry. Nine articles. Ba basically, we're talking about. Uh, With the uh, being able now to uh, sell and grow marijuana in the in the, the state of Massachusetts, we've been working. We we've been working the the, the board of health and working the planning board, and everybody's been working on putting the uh, necessary um, bylaws in place that that allows that to happen. Um, Still, even when somebody, uh, some, if a, dis a dispensary wants to come into town, there's still what's known as the host agreement, where we have the bylaws, but then we also have a host agreement that the board of selectmen works with the the uh, person that wants to run the dispensary. But we we uh, we will see that we're part of the uh, article that one of the articles that we that we have basically sets the tone with the zoning zoning enforcement where they can be. And it's it's there's a lot of paper that's generated with that, but it's only really a small change in in the use tables um, for the actual and 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 from the surrounding towns you notice that it looks like a a, a dispensary or a grow, growing facility going in Deerfield. Mm -hmm. they, have, they, have the, they have one almost pretty well built up in Burnington, mm -hmm. and they're happening all over the place. So it's just a matter of time. So that's going to be one of the questions. We also have um, some articles that deal with uh, what, what we consider time sensitive, um, one being a grant that we have, and this is, goes with Article 1, right? Article 1 and 2 are grants. And 2, right. Yeah, 1 and 2. All right, so Article. Article, article 1 is move that, the, and these are the motions, yes. right. is to move that the town vote to authorize the Board of Selectmen to acquire by purchase, gift, and or eminent domain a permanent easement for public sidewalk purposes in, on, and under a portion of portions of the property located on Hadley Road and the locations more or less depicted as permanent easement area one and permanent easement area two on the plan and title proposed easement plan, plan of plan of land in Sunderland, Massachusetts, prepared for Town of Sunderland, dated August 8th, 2018, prepared by Harold L. Eaton and Associates, a copy of which is on file to Town Clerk, and the funding there for transfer $2,990 from free cash. So do we know what that means? Yeah. Wait, wait, where is it going from where to where? Basically, it's going to go from uh, Old Amherst Road down to the apartments on uh, Hadley, Hadley Road. Hadley Hadley Road. Road. Which side, east or west? West. West side. So it's basically servicing the, the apartments. Mm -hmm. Correct. There's also a farm stand there. Uh, the yeah, there is. Yeah, on the other side. Well, it, it, it's it's interesting that, that that we you ask where does it serve? I, I just know when you drive down that road, um, it's. It can be difficult at that time yeah. with people on the road, right now. walking on the road. Um, 
So I know walking on that road can be tight with cars going by. So. Mm -hmm. Oh, I, and, yeah. and trust, I, yeah, that that road it 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 appears to be very narrow narrow at time. Um. It was, it was part of the pathway this plan. This is part of the steps that they came out with a couple of years ago, to put sidewalks in different areas of the Com town and everything Complete else. streets program. Yeah, they call Correct. them complete streets. It was part streets. of the plan. Yeah. Yeah. And, and, and basically we got a grant, We and, and we're not paying we're, we're not paying for the sidewalks. It's, it's um, through a grant, complete street grant. Um, basically, we're, we're, um, we're negotiating with uh, the homeowner um, right on the corner. It, is, it appears that the uh, the road is not necessarily exactly where it should be. Really? <laughs> Go figure. Um, so we have to, so we basically need to uh, um, have a little property so that we can so the the landowner is very uh, willing to work with us. And the next piece of property up going up to the apartment, um, they're they're in a process of refinancing, so we may not have to expend any money at all, um, right. depending. So we'll have the money in case it's needed. But I, I thought both landowners were very uh, uh, gracious in their conversation, and and there's other ways that it, things can be done. The reason we go into the eminent domain um, is it gets it make, makes it a permanent easement, so it's much much cleaner. Than donations of land, which was, was some of what's offered, but it's just so much easier with the eminent domain. So it's a friendly eminent domain. It's not. Whenever I hear as a selectman the word eminent domain, I have a problem with that, those words. But uh, in this case, it's a, an easy thing. It's kind of what we did down by the river bank uh, for the walk mm -hmm. as well. Any other questions? Um, Scott? Yeah. Charge. Okay, you all set? Yep. Okay. okay. So do you want to take a motion? You want to do a... We just have a... a sorry to interrupt. Do we have yep. an approximate number or... $2,919. $2,919. you have one, Elliot? It's, it's in your motion sheet? sheet? Yes. Yeah, it's there. Yeah, it's oh, there. It's, on the, it's on the other yeah. sheet. Yep, I'm looking at the, the, the detail. Yeah. And the detail uh, balance of use should have the suggested application of funds from the suggested resources. Yeah, right here, this one. There we go. So we took votes on recommendations on all of these, right? Time. Yep, that's correct. Okay. Right now we're identifying the funding sources. So Article 2 is moved at the town vote to transfer, transfer and, I, and I love this. This is one of those... Uh, <laughs> You have to trans. You have to vote money, but you're not going to spend money. But if you don't transfer the money, you, you don't create you can't it. Do right. It. Right. Yeah. So move that the town vote to transfer seventy-one thousand four hundred thirty-eight dollars from the stabilization account to be reimbursed one hundred percent by the Commonwealth under the Small Town Housing Choice Community Capital Grant Program. Said sum to be used for an analysis, streetscape design, and cost estimates for the School Street ADA Improvement and Infrastructure Design Project and the design and construction of a manhole on School Street, including all incidental and related expenses. Terry? Um, that's a grant that we received under the um, Commonwealth Small Town Housing Choice Community Capital Grant Program. And so what we'll be doing is looking at um, options, uh, conceptual design for some improvements out here um, on School Street, uh, working with the library, the neighbors, and um, town officials um, to come up with some different design options. We'll also be doing the um, design and construction for that manhole um, replacement. Yep. Now that manhole is a sewer manhole. So basically, what we discovered over the last year, six months, yeah, six six months a year, is that there's a there's a town sewer line that that comes from over by, um, I guess it's Wild Roots, yeah, Wild Roots Bends. Restaurant, <clears throat> and it comes under underneath the uh, state highway, comes over, Between and the ends in the in the town sewer to go this way, that ends up going back that way. Uh, and there's no manhole to to um, to maintain that line, so it, it at 
best we're told it has minimum pitch. It should be jet rotted and backed on a regular, like most things, <coughs> needs to be done once in a while. So that's why we're we're asking to for have a sewer manhole installed mm -hmm. so that we can act because what happened what can happen and did happen is that line stops it there's not enough flow mm -hmm. forms a solid wall which backs up into people's homes which ends up being a costly repair. Shouldn't uh, that come out of the sewer fund? This, uh, it's a grant. It's, it's a grant. grant. It's yeah. a okay. grant. It's hundred percent real. So it's a watch. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. We're not. Yeah. It's just a matter of you know. And, it, and it's like, and and the one thing Governor Baker did um, is is he went through when they first got in office and and he uh, appointed and this he's four years ago, and and his I lieutenant governor went around and worked with uh, municipalities and 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 and, and people and said, what does the government you know what? What can we do to make government easier? And one of the things was like, if you got, well, you got a police cruiser, you, before you had to pro, you had to call a special meeting, appropriate money into things, so you could take that insurance money that you were going to get, but you couldn't use, and it did away. But this grant is still one of those things that we we haven't fixed that thing yet. Do you have any questions? You want to just vote on it? We've got yeah. Quorum. So, all those in favor? Aye. Aye. For a okay, Article Three is uh, the zoning bylaw for the the marijuana. Um. Be a handout at the town meeting for that. So town council had some further recommendations for changes, and the planning board's not meeting until tomorrow night to vote those changes. Okay. So, um, we so we'll put the, this on hold for now. Yeah. Okay. Well, the handout won't be complete until yeah. they adopt it. All right. All right. The planning board's got to adopt what the suggestions are. Okay. Article four is moved that the town vote to accept general law chapter sixty four n section three to impose a local side sales tax at the rate of three percent of the total sales price upon the sale or transfer of marijuana or marijuana products by a marijuana retailer operating within the town of Sunderland to anyone other than a marijuana establishment. So basically it's, uh, this allows the town to uh, generate a, a few revenue dollars. Has there been any, any interest for anybody to open up a place? Tire kicking, just tire kicking. Wait. Not recently. Yeah. What's that? Yeah. 3% the statutory rate? Yes. Can we go higher? No. 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 That's it. That's you it. can go lower. <laughs> so, the 3% is the top. Good plan words, though. Well, some, some, some towns are looking at, some plans are looking, instead of putting a 3%, are looking at a yearly fee. Right. So they're saying, okay, pay us $20,000. Can we do both? In, on either war type of thing? No, and. Do both? I don't yeah. think so. No. But. Why not? The liquor store pays for a liquor license, and then they charge a sales tax on the liquor, where they used to. Yeah, sales tax doesn't come to the town, There's other things you can yeah. do within the host community agreement if we, we get to we that get, point. That, that'd be something we discussed, maybe discussed in the host com community agreement. Yeah, Sherry's right, but... This is like that local add-on meals tax. Yeah, yeah. They pay for a, uh, a, a, a license to run a restaurant to the town, so why not license to run a marijuana thing? Well, it would, be a se it would be a separate license, Bruce. This is, yeah. this is just adopting the statute yeah, at, I know. at yeah. max. Yeah. yeah, I mean, I don't see any problem with this. It's a, no, it's in the event that we open revenue. up a store, it's guaranteed revenue source. I know, the, yeah. the guys, the, the people that own the place in Northampton are making... Yeah, well... They just sold it. They just, just sold, got yeah. sold. They, they did. did. Yeah. I'd sell it, too. Some outfit from Georgia bought it. Well... Really? Yeah. Florida. Florida. A national, a national. How much I go office. for? I have no idea. Yeah. Yeah. I think what you'll see is all the big tobacco companies are going to start buying up all the marijuana things. Oh, yeah. Mm -hmm. yep. They're just waiting. The only yeah, reason they haven't is because it's not legal at the federal level. As soon as right. that happens. Right. As soon as that happens. Yep. Yeah. It's going to be a. Altria's got a big stake in a national Canadian, market. Canadian job. Oh, yeah. Nope. But. Oh, uh, the question? Yeah. They're just waiting. All right. All in favor? Move that the town vote to transfer $9,708.58 from free cash to fund the FY19 Franklin County Technical School Capital Assessment. 
That was an oversight. Um, it was included in the <clears throat> budget documents and not listed as a separate assessment. Um, so I missed it. So that's basically what that that is. So it wasn't included in the <coughs> original in the original motion and we pulled out all the expense pieces right. at, town, at the annual town meeting. Got it. Have they noticed yet? <laughs> yeah. Yeah, oh yeah, they, they called. <laughs> <laughs> There's a reason it's Oops. here. Yeah, <laughs> good play though. <laughs> uh, what nine thousand? Favor, yeah. aye. Moved at the town vote to transfer six thousand dollars. Question mark. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and the treasury to find to fund firefighter physical exams mandated under the new OSHA guidelines. Steve couldn't Please be explain. here tonight, but he'll be mm -hmm. here next week. Um, to talk a little bit more about um, Article 6 and 7. Um, he did send an email. The um, OSHA requirements are for all the firefighters, but going forward, once these 10 are in, it would just be new hires, so it's not something you know, that we're going to have to appropriate annually six thousand dollars so so I can have I can have a physical once work for 20 years never have to have another physical again I believe it's just so, no sounds to me like it's going to be a recurring expense a yeah baseline but he can right. probably talk a little bit yeah more about do, do that. we fall right. under so OSHA regulations though we do the state new state regulations There's something the February 1st that went into effect Tom I just uh, yeah, learned about I, I, the other day that I think mm -hmm. it, it's I something it was for where the, the state. I didn't know if the, the state can also. the state can adopt the OSHA rules or they something, did. but it's enforced by the state yep. or something or other. That's correct. I, I think that needs some looking into. It is a state. That was our goal for this week, but the chief was unavailable. So we're going to talk. I mean, if it's just for new hires, wait until you know the. The annual town meeting for it and put it in his budget for next year. Well, all the existing yeah, firefighters existing have to have it by then. February 1st, I believe, is what. Oh, the, it, yeah. I thought you said the existing firefighters. No, don't and then it. it would be new hires after, after that. that. Well, hey, if we gotta wait, we gotta wait. So, where do we. I need more information. Yeah. I'm in the same way. Yeah, he'll be here. Oh, I feel, I feel this. I feel the same way. Okay, and that, that he's going to explain Article Six and Seven. Mm -hmm. Okay, move that the town vote to transfer five thousand seventy-two dollars from free cash to pay for the operating expenses of the South County Senior Center. So, so basically, what happened last year? Uh, we hired. We hired a. Uh, um, someone that comes in that ex is experienced in running senior centers and they looked at how how we funded the senior center and what they found was that there's a number of grants um that the, the senior center receives that were not necessarily um guaranteed so basically the recommendation was that we needed to we're not increasing i mean the the budget's increasing, but we're not really changing the operation. The we're assessment's doing, increasing. The assessment's increasing, yeah. but the operation's right. not changing. <coughs> so that now that we're we're paying, and we're taking instead of having money being taken out from these potential grants, so that was funded straight up, which which we which was our goal, has always been to fund, and not fund on the grants. So, so they're, they're reworking the assessments for the South County Senior Center to reflect the actual expenses, and they're allocating it through the formula to the towns, and this is our charge. Correct. Got it. And those grant rounds, instead of simply, operate, simply funding the operating budget, would do what the grants do, what they're targeted for. Right. Got it. Is this amount something that we could theoretically, as the town, get reimbursed for with separate grants? or? No, so what what happens now is when we when we get grants and stuff, Elliot, the 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 grants are applied for um, through the town, but they're done through the senior center. But they're specifically targeted. What they're trying to do is get their operating expenses out from being reliant on grant rounds. So will this be a recurring expense then yeah. for us? Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. So this is about 
can we expect it to be about five a year, or is that something that's going to go up? You're going to see this. You're going to see at least this delta. Yeah, this this change will be reflected next year plus plus a regular assessment. The two and a half, right? Article 9 is moved that the town vote to transfer $6,389 from capital stabilization to install and program existing VFDs, variable frequency drives, and geothermal pumps at the Sunderland, Sunderland Public Library. So this work was actually completed. The library is looking to have this uh, essentially reimbursed out of capital stabilization. It is targeted to the, it is specific to the building. It is meets the criteria for capital greater than $5,000, greater than the life cycle, and it happened in the mid-budget cycle. So we happen to have a special town meeting and they're looking to have this plugged in. This uh, equipment as installed is a, a site generational shift and it allows that building now to be, uh, and it currently is, uh, fully automated. So we'll see some of this in energy reduction in the, in the future. So this would be a standalone article at a regular meeting regardless. This is something that was planned, right? Didn't right. they talk about this for a couple of years? Yep. Yeah, okay. They did a, they did a, a series of phases of, the, of yeah. the air handling units. These are the two big pumps. And that got done over the last quarter. Yeah. Four. And capital stabilizations, if we would appropriate it from there yeah. anyway. Yep. yep. Cool. Okay, that's it. Um, if you all have any moments, there's uh, I don't think we need your time, but it's just a funds transfer if you want. So the the fire chief's yeah. targeted for our next meeting to get these two questions answered. Yeah, yeah. So this was a big one, uh, seventy five hundred. Okay. Sure. Do we have anything else? Um, just updates. Uh, okay. okay. Updates. Yeah. yeah. Start? Okay. Oh, stop. No, she's oh, okay. Um, just to bring to your attention, um, we re received an email from Colonial, and they're working to schedule a meeting with um, at the Burkhog yep. sometime, probably in February. I'm assuming mm -hmm. we're thinking now. We'd like representatives you know, from the selection and the Energy Committee. So, mm -hmm. um, the Energy Committee will be sending someone, and as soon as I get more information about the meeting, I'll let you know. This is specific to aggregation. Mm -hmm. For the aggregation, yep. Uh, just to talk about maybe what the town might want to see in, a, mm -hmm. in an aggregation plan. In what the actual goals are. Getting, mm -hmm. once, it, once it's approved by the DPU, we've got to be able to set what our own goals are. Correct. As a municipality, and that's where public input is going to be very important. Yeah. Yes, very absolutely. Um, and then the other thing, uh, street lights. I expect that'll probably kick off soon. We were just waiting um, for delivery of the equipment, mm -hmm. and we've had some requests or suggestions for additional totally. street lights mm -hmm. yeah. um, at Claybrook, over by Mike's Maze. Mm -hmm. um, Uh, was Hadley Road at the Hadley new proposed Road. new proposed crosswalk. So just to get the board's um, mm -hmm. input on that and okay, and I'll uh, I'll have the company take a look and see if we can put them in. Depending on if whether this is a new location or not, Mr. Chair, it's important to bear in mind there may not be infrastructure on the poles yet. Yeah, right. that's we're gonna have to yeah. work with the utility depending on the location of the request. Well, I'm wondering if they almost need a little process, I guess, at some point to be I put in place for that. It would be helpful if when requests. people are making suggestions or requesting lights, if they could give us a poll number. Poll number, number yep. yep. If there's, a, you know, wires there so that we can connect, and that, yeah. that would be helpful. And one of the things that we're looking at is uh, putting back the light at the end of Swampville Drive going Correct. down to the school. Yep. yep. But a proper light. Good. Okay, Scott, you have any updates? Uh, the Frontier Capital Working Group um, moved its um, recommendation, final document, forward to the school committee. So I'll, I'll check and see what the vote there was. And then uh, negotiations, we have another meeting later this week uh, that is for units A and C at uh, Frontier. Good. Thank you, Scott. David? Um, my ditch stuff. 
and uh, and then we've got a meeting for um, I'm just trying to see I think it's the 24th or so for um, the Union 38 negotiations okay strategy session on that coming up Thank you, Davey. Mm -hmm. uh, just to let you know that uh, if the river walk will be finished in the springtime, but if anybody would like to take a walk before the snow flies and take and walk on it, it's uh, it's pretty impressive. Mm -hmm. So, so it's, it's a very nice, a very nice addition to our town. All right, Peter. You um, I was just going to ask about that light at the junction of Swampfield and Old Amherst Road. Is there no functioning? Yeah, it's going to be. It, we're going to put a light there. Or something because it's pretty dark there. Yeah, we're, no, we're, Peter. We're we, going to put something there. We confirmed that there was wiring at the pole, and it just has to. We have to pick a fixture and install it. Because, okay, like you know, I mean, either for just general evening use or going for a special town meeting this time of year, it's it's a tough. dark. It's quite dark. We've had neighbors. Neighbors have uh, butters have brought that to our attention as well. Okay, yeah. Well. Yeah. And 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 it was removed because some neighbors were concerned and we always felt that it was the wrong light that was installed but now now they come back with much different lights right. and you have um, a much wider choice of lights we have a school committee meeting tomorrow night and we'll be getting first look at the budget and hmm. we'll see I'll let you know how you know I'll pass sure. along how it stands but it may be a difficult year right sure so, thank um, you Peter they're all coming in that way this year, Peter. It's just, yeah. <laughs> I, I appreciate it. It's always the same right. way. So. It's, it's, I, I sometimes I think it's um, it's interesting because um, board of, board of selectmen sometimes it's, a, it's sometimes it's it's like it, it ends up being this adversarial position and and so a lot of times it's like you you just can't say. Yes to everything. You got to question stuff because you got limited resources. You're trying to do the best job of using them. Right. And to do that, you got to you got to question. You got to be willing to question stuff, even though it's your town and. We know, yeah, we live here too, and and I mean and so on. You can't pay for everything. Right, and and but you you and and just so people understand, it, it's it's. Um, yeah, you have to foster, again, I say it a lot, a lot of times, you have to foster and promote conversations. And, and, some, and, sometimes, and sometimes it's difficult, but tip, typically, I, I even know, I, I even know in our conversations up here, sometimes, sometimes if everything that we voted on was 3-0, people would wonder, well, how, how can you all agree on everything all the time? And we don't. Um, sometimes, and again, we sometimes we start at, at diametrically opposite positions, and cor through the course of the conversation, we end up on different positions. Um, but I also think that you have to part part of the conversation is being willing to listen to what people are saying, also. So some, sometimes it takes hard to process. Sometimes it's cumbersome. Um, sometimes it's uncomfortable. But we're we're willing to put we're. We've always been willing to put the time and effort into doing that, and I would say, you know, let people know. It's just, you know, I, I thought there was a good question today to the to the chief about well, what are you going to do with the next person? Right. Oh yeah. You know. Perfect. And in the past, person. we had a chief tell us that well, we're going to add a detective. Well, that that was DOA. You know, I mean, that that was you know, we you you hire you know professional get the CPAC from. The state police will come in if you needed real investigation. In, in the case, us wasn't made to have a detective, but we also had a chief come in look for for an added person. They told us specifically what it would do. It was going to replace some part time ta part time officers, and he said these full time officers know what the community is like. They know that Tom drives a certain kind of truck, and that truck's in the yard, so Tom's probably home. And, and if he sees a, a blue truck there, it's probably not Tom. And why is it there? So, I mean, he, we talk about stuff like that, and he made sense. So, and I remember one year when we had to cut out all part-time officers because there was no money, and it wasn't like anybody wanted to do it. Okay, but you got to make choices. Make choice. So, so, you, so, it's so hard sometimes. Yeah. And 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 again, it's not 
nothing we say should be taken personal. It's not meant to be personal. Um, we're just trying to work with a. I mean, we have we have to be realists. We don't we don't have an endless supply of money. And and if and if so, it's not. Sometimes people say, "We'll just say no." And it's like, okay. Sometimes you have to say no, but sometimes you say you have to know why you say no before you just say no. So good point. All right. Anything else, Peter? I have one more thing. Hmm. Cherry. Uh, Conway is applying for a, a efficiency and regionalization grant, and they've invited us to participate in that application. It's for an HR study. I Did thought that was, cool. a, yeah, that was a wonderful. Yeah, that, yeah, yeah. I, I agree. Okay. One hundred percent. Heartily. And and. Um, I, yeah, that that's it. And the other thing is that we have a request to uh, designate a uh, school choice week. Are we anybody? Uh, Peter, you want anything you help us with that proclamation about? Did you see that? Commemorating Sunderland School Choice Week. I'm not. Okay. No, Would you like to see it? Sorry. I'll find out next tomorrow night. If okay. Know, so. Well, this is January 20 through 26. Choice I'll be glad to give him my copy if you want to look at it. How school choice is a great thing for the state of Massachusetts. Yeah. Well, that's all. That's all other. Yeah. <laughs> I think you all want to go home now, don't you? Uh, I, 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 I have I, no, I, no, see no need to put that in. I struggle with proclamations. We've had plenty of them come to us, and this is another one that is yeah. something that, yeah. uh, anyway. All right. Sherry, rip it up. Okay. <laughs> Thank you. Remember the one that came to us about the UN one time? Yeah. 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 All right, this so town offices, town offices will be closed on Monday in honor of Martin Luther King's uh, day. So, But we will be having a meeting next Tuesday, January 22nd. It will begin at 6.30. So uh, no, no uh, town hall will be closed on Monday. We will be here on the 22nd. And meeting. special town meeting on the 28th. Special town meeting on the 28th. All right. That's one, final, one final motion. Move to adjourn. A motion to adjourn. Second. And seconded. All those in favor? Aye. Aye.